there's an extraordinary problem in Hollywood which is called draft inflation, in which it's not inconceivable that you can write five or six or ten drafts for somebody and submit it to the studio as a first draft and then write another four or five and submit it as a second draft. And as a writer, we tend to be very weak in our ability to stand up for ourselves because we, we want the films to get made. And, and we begin to, if, if you start to have a client relationship uh, where you're working for somebody else, you want to make them happy. And you have to find, I think, the way to make yourself happy in writing. And there are two kinds of writing in Hollywood. One is writing for someone, and one is writing for you. And you have to understand that there's a lot of pure craft involved in those kinds of circumstances. And I entered into this project with Jerry experiencing and, and anticipating a craft-like uh, process. And what I discovered in, the, in doing it, as I did also with Spielberg and have in a number of cases, is that ultimately, for me, all projects are personal. They're all very important to me. And, they're, and if you are writing to satisfy a client, it's conceivable that you will not write to satisfy yourself. And if you don't satisfy yourself, the money doesn't pay for the disappointment. It really, there's a sense of, of betraying your own, your own voice. And in a sense, I came to that position with Jerry about two weeks ago and quit the project, knowing he knew that I was going to do this. But I said, I can't write anymore on this project. I just... You know, I've spent a year and a half of my life, and I have to tell you, you guys are still young, but when you hit 54 years old, there comes a point where you realize that, that you have a limited duration on this planet, and each year becomes very precious. And I had just given a year of my life to Steven Spielberg, and I'd now given a year and a half of my life to Jerry Zucker, and I felt I have too many things that I need to do. And Jerry was deeply sympathetic because we have not been able to find the core of the script. We have written version upon version upon version, and each one of them has wonderful scenes and wonderful characters and wonderful ideas and all sorts of delicious things you would love to see on the screen, but somehow this project is not cohering. Jerry described it last week as a kind of Frankenstein. It's got all the pieces, but it's not no soul. A lot of people come into the process of making movies thinking, well, I'm a professional, so I should know the answers. You have to understand, in William Goldman's terms, nobody knows anything. There is no answer. It's finding how to make it work. Just like there's no answer in your own life, and how do you fall in love with somebody else? How do you, what, what is the chemistry of falling in love? You know, you know, you can have people talk about it all you want, but once you start to meet somebody, and you're trying to find your way into it, it's magical, it's mysterious, and it's it's about its own reality. It's not about anything you can impose on it. You can't find the rules of it. All you can do is follow the path to it. So what we're really doing in this movie is finding how to make a story about two people in love and how to make it real to an audience. And that it's taken a year and a half is, is painful on a certain level, but Jerry's belief is that a film has to, has to work. I, I did the first draft in four months that I would have been happy to make, and I think any studio in Hollywood would have produced. But Jerry wants to carry it to a higher level. I'm not at all opposed to that. I think raising your work to the highest level possible is really worthy, worthy and, and valuable. But you also have to know when to say, I can't figure it out. I don't know the solution. If you're in year three, you probably have gone too long. The biggest problem I'm facing right now is Cameron Crowe said to somebody, God knows who, that he spent three years on Jerry Maguire. And now every producer and director in Hollywood says, well, Jerry Maguire took three years. Why can't this take three years? Because you can't necessarily afford three years in this, in this business. On the other hand, if you really believe in the work and you're really committed to it, three years, of course, is worth your time. But this was, an, this was a rewrite of another piece of material. It's an adaptation. I did it truly as a favor. So I had no idea what I was getting myself into. It's hard to walk away from something that you've invested in that deeply. Sometimes you have to do it. On the other hand, I'm telling you that and probably will be sucked back in next week and writing on it again. So. I never knew when I started to write movies that movies were about anything. I always thought it was just a story. It had a beginning, had a middle, and an end. I later discovered that characters had arcs. I didn't even know when I started writing that there's such a thing as an arc. I had a kind of organic sense of this, but I didn't. I couldn't delineate it. I couldn't explain it to myself or to anybody else. But as you start to really start to work, what you have to realize is that there are all of these layers that make a film work. And the most important, ultimate layer is that it be 
a worthy experience for people, that they come away from it knowing something they didn't know before. Not just that they've watched an adventure, not just that they have seen something unfold, which is fine, a lot of movies get by with that, but movies that are going to have any permanence at all in the culture have to be about something. They have to have a deeper undercurrent. And this idea of breaking the back of a movie is a really important idea because this, what it's about doesn't give itself up easily. It's not something you know automatically. Jerry and I have maybe 150 pages of notes of what this movie is about, but it doesn't mean anything because you can say what it's about, but what is it about? You know, John Ciardi, a poet, used to say, a poem must not mean but be. It's not about meaning, it's about what is it? What is it communicating? What is it really saying to people? And, and, and it's really crucial that you begin to understand as you work your movie that you know what it's saying. What is it trying to communicate?